127 going north and coming south. I want to... Okay, good morning. Welcome. My name is Chris Caius. I'm the chairman of the administration committee, King County Administration Committee, and I'd like to call the meeting for Wednesday, June 9th, 2021 to order. It's nine being 9.01 a.m. Uh, can I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes for the meeting of May 12th, 2021? Mark move. Gums second. Gums second. Oh. And, and, and Davis here. Oh. And Ford's here. Well order. Uh, let's have roll call. This is for attendance. Where's Fraza? Yeah. Berman. Berman here. Davis. Davis here. Ford. I'm pretty good. Ford here. Fraz. Fraz here. Gums. Gums here. Martin. Present. Caius. Caius present. And way ahead of the schedule, apparently. Starting right out. Okay. Now, can I have a motion? I'll take Mr. Martin's motion to approve the minutes of May 12th, 2021. Gum second. Uh, any changes in the minutes? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Berman? Yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Fries? Fries, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, at the request and uh, at the, uh, and I'm going to ask the uh, committee if it's okay if we move uh, item in section 10, new business courthouse corrections center camera system upgrade project and sheriff's residential addiction treatment facility up to the beginning of the program so that Mr. Our sheriff can uh, present on that and then get back to all his good work. That's okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> oh, it's up. You're up. All right. Street. Admin committee, thanks for having me this morning. It sounds like my mic is on. Uh, at the request of Chris Allen and working closely with him, uh, by the way, he's been incredible to work with. So uh, keep up the good work, Chris and team. Uh, he asked that I come and talk about our uh, correction center and judicial center. Let me introduce, let, try one of those other mics, maybe. Just, is this soft here? It's pretty soft. Either that or speak right I turn it. my head too much when I talk, so I think that's part of my issue. So I'll go right here. How about yeah, that? That's much it. better? Okay. Yeah. So... Um, he invited me to discuss the uh, upgrade to the camera system in the courthouse and the jail. I want to thank Chief Judge Hall for joining today as this directly affects everything that he oversees at the Main Judicial Center, along with uh, Detective Ed Kaddish, who is uh, kind of our program specialist when it comes to all things new at the Sheriff's Office. So uh, thank him for being here, and he can also give some low-level input if anybody has additional questions. So I'm waiting for Blair to queue up our PowerPoint at his leisure. It'll be the uh, camera center upgrade one. I have two different PowerPoints for you today. Can I add something, Chris? <laughs> it depends on what it is, Chris. Go ahead. <laughs> um, as the sheriff and uh, Detective Cadage brief the camera system. Into the mic, please, Mr. I apologize. Uh, if there's specific questions on the number of cameras, locations, <laughs> capability, and general scope uh, should not be discussed in an open setting for safety and security concerns. Okay. Thank you. Is that the disclaimer ahead of everything? Yeah. This program is going to the right through. Thank you. Thank you for that, Chris. I appreciate it. Blair, do you need to play this video on your end or can I play it from here? Do I, are you able to play, play that video, video from your end? Just click. So our video system inside the jail is original from 2008 when the facility is constructed. As you can see, it's been a constant issue as far as officer safety, detainee safety, case prosecution when it comes to our state's attorney's office, as when we have uh, uh, interaction or altercation like this that's occurring in the far deep corner there, you can't even make out the faces of those involved, let alone what exactly is happening. And uh, this is the one and only camera that captures that entire side of, uh, of the jail cell block. So I think just by playing this video, you kind of get my air of concern about how fast we need to move forward on, uh, on replacing this system. So we did do an RFP over the last few months. We have, uh, Ed, is it five or six different companies that have come through with bids? We had six total. Six total companies, thank you for that, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. 
But again, you get the uh, the impact of not having a proper security camera system. And this is the old analog style. It's not digital scale, camera scale, camera scale. This video here, Blair, if you could play that one. This is Kendall County Sheriff's Office corrections camera system from their control center. They just did this upgrade about two years ago. It was right around a $2 million project. This is what a corrections camera center sh should look like, control center should look like. And that's what ours looks like. So we're a bit behind the times, as you can tell. And mind you, Kendall County averages about 100 to 120 detainees in their facility at the time. They're about a fifth the size of Kane County when it comes to operations, but they're, they're far ahead of our game in, uh, in electronics. What this project will also involve is the ability to have indirect supervision in our jail cells. So right now we're direct supervision where the officers, one officer is in the cell block with up to 64 inmates at a time. Um, this does, as you can imagine, after a 10 to 15 to 20 year career as a corrections officer, place a lot of weight and anxiety on, uh, on a CO. So they love the idea of us making indirect capability with this system. So we'll have officers that will just be outside of the cell block in the vestibule with our enhanced camera placement. We'll be able to allow them a view of 360 around the cell block and not have to be in constant contact with detainees throughout their entire shift. So this really goes to what we've been trying to do since uh, 2018, end of 2018, 2019, and overall detainee altercations, which are way down, dropped by 35% over the last two years. And of course, detainee attacks on officers has been dropped by almost 90% over the last two years. With a lot of our programming that we've put in place, safety measures, training, and you know, when it comes to liability and, and financial impact on the county, these are our stats on workman's comp claims out of our correction center. So you can see that we've uh, built a trajectory uh, since we kind of got our handle on operations in there in 2019, where we're trending vastly down in the number of uh, officers who are injured. And this really just adds to that entire initiative. So the reason why we're discussing this today is these bids that have come in from these six different companies hover in between three and $4 million. So our team is going to be going through uh, with the help of IT, with the help of uh, facilities and scanning through these RFPs, grading them, scoring them. And to offset that $4 million project, we do have 469,000 in insurance coverage from the Judicial Center uh, for, for uh, camera upgrade there. This is when the, uh, the control center at the courthouse had flooded. So we do have that in the, uh, in the hopper to offset this entire project. So again, this would be combining the jail and camera uh, and courthouse camera system upgrade to get everybody on the same level and same platform with uh, modern technology. So really, uh, like Chris Allen and I had spoke about, this is, this is a placeholder. You know, this is where we'll be coming back within the next month after we have uh, all of the RFPs graded and trying to identify sources of funding for this. Any questions? Anything for the sheriff? Pretty straightforward. I'm having uh, security camera envy with Kendall County. Yes. Right away. Compare and contrast. Seeing that. Mr. Chair. Just, uh, just yes, Mr. Brown. Comment. I'm not on the committee, but I just want to make this comment. You're I welcome did, anyway. I thank you. I did go out and take the tour with, with the sheriff, and he showed me the, um, the system as you have it right now. And I was just completely blown away of how old and antiquated it was. I mean, your cell phone has got a better camera than what is out there in the jail right now. So I certainly support what he's trying to do here. Thank you. Okay. Sounds suitable. Great. Great. Hey, Blair, can we queue up the uh, second one? Judge Hall, thanks again. Really appreciate you. So this one I'm incredibly excited about. We have worked uh, since I took office to implement a residential treatment center inside the sheriff's office. This is non-custodial. It's not technically part of the jail, even though it sits on top of the jail. This is also the first of its kind in the nation. And folks, we only have two residential treatment centers in Kane County for a society that faces extreme addiction issues, especially since COVID. So we have this big weight of where we take people that are most in need. We have officers in our uh, Away Out program who have to transport people all the way to Chicago for residential treatment. Um, it just makes no sense 
that we have to uh, have such limited resources in a county that has uh, so much to offer. So in my first month as sheriff, I took myself on a tour through parts of our building. I know it sounds absurd that I had never been to, even though I worked there for 20 years. And I realized that we had about 25,000 square feet of unused space. This, uh, this includes the uh, empty cell block, uh, the shell space, as we call it, on the top of the south tower of the jail which uh, originally was designed, hey, and when the county population grows, we're gonna keep, have to keep locking people up. We'll just take the roof off the building, literally take the roof off the building and drop in modular cells, put the roof back on, and we'll have a whole new uh, cell block up there to accommodate the population. However, as we know, we've seen the, cr the criminal justice system trend the other way, where our jail population is decreasing. We have cashless <clears throat> bail coming up, which will also, uh, give us less, I'm sorry, I'm fast forwarding here, less space um, needed inside of our jail. So now is the time to move forward on that. So if, Blair, can you play this video real quick? This front lobby area of the sheriff's office, the concept would be to lease this to a private residential uh, treatment center, a company that is already very familiar in how to operate uh, these programs. And we've got about uh, 80 to 90 different people or different companies across the United States that have been contacted about this opportunity. And I would say 20% of them have expressed interest. So again, you're looking at all completely unused space here in the, uh, it would be the west side of the sheriff's office. As we walk down the corridor, you can tell we use it for a lot of storage which is a great thing to have the MUF for now. I'm sorry, the multi-purpose building. And also when we talk about the end of cashless bail, this will give another option for judges to refer people into residential treatment. Again, right next door to the courthouse, right on top of the jail for our population that needs it the most. This would be the entryway to a portion of the treatment center. This is the entire shell space, two stories. Beautiful windows that overlook the uh, majestic lake behind the courthouse. So you get the idea there with our, our reef tour. So when we launched this project and the idea of it um, back in the day, we faced several obstacles and, and our state's attorney's office helped us to identify them. We had to adjust zoning to allow third party operation of a uh, treatment center, I'm missing that word, on zone F. So county zoning helped us pass that one. We finally had a state law to overcome. Sorry, this is running a little bit slow on the clicker. Where again, we had to adjust the state law to allow a private property, or, I'm sorry, a third party private entity to operate an addiction treatment center on county property at the courthouse. Fortunately, uh, Representative Spain and Wheeler ran this bill, SB 84, uh, through the House and Senate, which passed both unanimously there. It is now sitting on the governor's desk for signature. Obviously, we don't anticipate having any issues with that. So now we kind of come to the point where we have to decide what we want to do as a county. Do we want to proceed with the idea of hosting a residential treatment center and leasing the space to a, a third party to operate? Now, these are about two years ago, we had Batavia Enterprises come in and do architectural renderings and business models of what this space would look like. So it does look a little bit like a jail cell block. However, remember it's non-custodial. These are all uh, sleeping rooms with daytime area, uh, counseling sessions in small and large group rooms on the, uh, the lower and upper floors and office space for staff that would be working within that facility. They also built out a business model, um, and there's, there's two different ways of looking at this. So we take this shell space and we just say, treatment center, you guys are the experts. We're leasing you the space, you do the build out, and this is how much you're gonna pay us per square foot. Or the county opts to do the build out, and then we lease the space from there. So again, this is a placeholder conversation where I would like to come to, and, and really a conversational piece where I, where I come to you and I say, as the admin committee, and, and I have a whole 
a handout that I need to run out and grab. I left it in the truck. So I need to run out and grab so I can give it to everybody in the room here. That gives you uh, a better financial breakdown and different options of a build out or lease format. So again, all conversational. And I would like to open that up to, to anybody who has input at this point. Okay, thank you. Sheriff Hain, are there, do you, are there questions for the sheriff? Mr. Martin. <clears throat> I think you've already answered it, but just to make sure I'm clear. M Mr. Martin, this, into the mic so everybody I'm here. sorry. I think you've already answered it, but just to make sure I'm clear, the, 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 this, this would go in the two-story so that this, the, the intervening floor would be put in. This is, this is, this is where it's going to go, where the two stories are now. Yes. Okay. I mean, I know it's a dumb question. No, nope, not dumb at all. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman Strathman here. Uh, Mr. Strathman. Yes. I would like to request that uh, Sheriff Hain uh, put the handout in all the mailboxes or have somebody do that for him because I'm not in the room, but I would love to see the uh, details on this. I think this is a fabulous idea. I certainly will, Cheryl. Could send forward that to electronically to everyone. Yeah. Okay. Thank Save you. Paper. Of course. Okay. And again, Mr. Martin. After I ask, ask my stupid yes. question, now I'll make a <laughs> comment. I think this is a great idea uh, it, for a number of perspectives. Um, the um, and the only question I have about whether we build it out and lease it or have the tenant or the occupant, whatever that legal term would be, licensee or whatever they are do it is, I don't know what the market is. Uh, and I assume that that's part of the investigation that we'd conduct would be to find out if these facilities typically build their own, you know, handle their own build out or, or if they, they move in. I'm, I, I would guess, at least based on my experience, that they probably do a lot of their own build out. They do. Uh, and, and so it, to me, it's just, it, it, it's, a, it's a great thing to do for the county. It's a great utilization of space. It meets, it meets a need um, I just, I think it's the best deal since sliced bread. Check, check, check. Yeah. And so our concept with leasing the space, we were working with the state's attorney's office, going back and forth with BEI. And we realized really the state's attorneys pushed us in this direction. They said, look, we can be your agent on this. If you guys want to be the real estate leaser, if, if we want to do all the marketing ourselves. So I think we're in a comfortable zone. We've built up enough material, enough data. Uh, we have enough contact points that if we decide as a county, and it'd probably be uh, prudent for me to do a resolution, maybe at the next admin on which direction we want to take it in, lease the raw space or do a build out. Um, and then after that, once we have that board approval on our direction, then we can begin that marketing plan and, uh, and go forward on our own. Roz has a comment. Mr. Froz? Question. I'm sorry, Sheriff. Um, so, just so I understand the build, the uh, business model on this, the the uh, people utilizing this facility would be charged a, a fee of some kind. Yes, Is typically, that... re treatment centers run on a 60/40 model, so they want 60% of their bed space to be insurance paid beds. So you're thinking of those people with HMO or PPO, uh, and they're charging them anywhere in the ballpark of 200 to 500 dollars a day for these beds, and that takes care of the other 40%, which are typically uh, state insurance uh, folks, folks who don't have employment insurance. Um, so it's it's achieving that model, and that's why I, I like having a, an experienced third-party entity operate this facility. Facility. It's it's a multi multi million dollar business model that these folks have built out there. Um, so to let them plug into this space and run from there, um, I, I'm most comfortable with that. And there's both. Um, is there both inpatient and outpatient where people would? stay so there would, yes this would be strictly residential we would uh run our outpatient through you know the the third parties we use in the community okay so essentially the county would uh, our our uh position would be la uh, basically landlord and collecting rent and the uh the vendor then would uh handle all the collections and billing and all that kind of stuff that's correct okay thank you miss gums um just for purpose of conversation I personally like the idea of having the, into your I personally like the idea of having them do the build out um visiting treatment centers. Um first of all, you're gonna have the obstacle of people going to the judicial centers. Um but making it less jaily, I think, is hugely important. 
And then I also have a question, does this include a detox wing or section um, in the models? Do we know that? Information? That's a great question. I didn't put uh, detox in here just because Delnor is less than a mile away. And typically right. that seems to be the safer spot right. uh, to run a detox out of, and then they could transfer straight over to okay. us. And, and I was very remiss. I didn't point out that the anticipated uh, annual lease commission is anywhere from 400,000 to 530,000, depending on how much space they actually decide to take up. So that's additional revenue, obviously, for the county. Thank you. Okay. Alan, question? Miss Allen, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there would certainly be a commitment of years to this project, which is very worthy. Um, I just, can you look into the crystal ball and say, well, if we tie up the space for a 20 year lease, um, do we project that we would not need that space um, as an expanded jail for that 20 year period or whatever? Um, can you get out your crystal ball for me? Thank you, Sheriff. Yes, Deb, just in the way the justice system is trending with our jail population decreasing, cashless bail on the forefront, uh, I don't anticipate that we'll ever use up our, our jail space or existing space of 640 beds when we hover around 400 detainees right now. Um, of course, push come to shove. This, this is such an essential component that we need here in Kane County, this residential treatment center, that again, push come to shove if we had to start housing people uh, down in Kendall County for, you know, 70 bucks a day in order to provide this service and generate about a half million dollars in revenue a year. I think it's a, a worthwhile exchange. And that's the kind of information that you have that we need. Thank you. You're welcome. Fries has one other comment. Mr. Fries? Um, just, Sheriff, we don't need to get into all the details today, but as this moves forward, I would just like to ask you or Mr. Allen to, uh, you know, there's certain details like elevator service and parking and things that this committee uh, will be concerned about. And, you know, we just essentially started uh, using that south parking lot as our impound and storage. So I know that's going to be stressed somewhat. So I'd like to know uh, in the future how those will all be affected. Certainly. Just to ease your mind on that, we would push the uh, the parking area for the residential treatment center to the front parking lot. So as you as you face north out the sheriff's office, we would prefer all operations come and go through there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody here in the room? Anybody online? Okay. Well, right. thank you no, thank both you. for uh, joining us this morning. See you, Clint. And we will continue with our regularly scheduled. Is there anyone here for a financial report? Seeing none, the reports are attached. And is there any public comment online or in the room? Hearing none, seeing none. Facilities mail. Facilities management, that would be you, Mr. Allen. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, I have some updates on the uh, status of the current capital projects. Um, the building a elevator has passed resolution 21-243. Uh, so now I'd like to mention the timelines. The project start date or letter of intent notice to proceed will be May 12th. Uh, the contractor shall not remove any existing elevator service until the new equipment is secured and then uh, allowed for one month of installation with a substantial completion date on or about around July 20th of 21. So for the building B lower roof replacement, coroner's office demolition and Fabian ma uh, building management office demolition, I'd like to wait to see where uh, the item, these items fall into the uh, county's master plan, which is in development. I think that would be prudent to hold off on those till further notice. Same thing with certain parking lot repairs, seal coating, crack filling, uh, sidewalk repairs and replacement. I do have an update on the JJC build out. Um, it was approved by the board on May 11th. Uh, and we're, we're still looking at a substantial completion date on or about uh, January 16th. And that's all I have for updates. Okay. Any questions for <clears throat> Mr. Allen? Great. 
Then moving on to a resolution authorizing a contract for Kane County Jail East Drive Rehab Project. I have a motion and a second. Martin. Davis moves. And Mr. Four Davis. Seconds. Did you get that okay? Martin and Davis. Okay. You're up so, again, Mr. Allen. Yes. Um, so this uh, project is supposed to proceed on or about July 13th and with a substantial completion date on or about uh, August 30th of 2021. And I do have a rendering. Um, if Blair, if you can pull that up so uh, members of the committee and the public can see the scope of work. I believe I sent it to you this morning. Mr. Caius, while uh, that's being loaded, if you don't mind, we can move on to the next one. Uh, okay, then. Well, actually, that has a presentation also, and I was uh, informed just a little bit ago, uh, the circuit clerk had a significant conflict come up this morning and will not be able to make it here to, okay. to brief, similar to like the sheriff. Well, did. we've got a motion and a second on the floor. Okay, we, we can wait uh, for Blair to get this loaded. This is the uh, description. This what you're waiting for is just a uh, visual of the description of yeah, the drive of the, into the coroner's office. Yeah the, yeah, the scope of the project on the jail drive. Just wanted to have that out there for informational purposes. Obviously, uh, I've already been in contact with the sheriff and he knows that we'll have to make adjustments on entry into the area. So during the project. Davis, I'm comfortable calling the vote. And the documents are already on in the packet anyway, right? Is there any... Any question that we, uh, anybody need any of the slide presentation or are we okay to vote? Roz can make a comment. Roz? Um, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but yeah, this, this is the drive where a lot of the construction traffic came in for the new building. Uh, there was also the gate islands that were in that drive and there was a lot of uh, utility crossings to service the new building. So, um, uh, is that, am I talking about the right one, Chris? Yes, sir, you are. The uh, rendering just came up okay. and shown the scope. So it's essentially from the top of the uh, Sheriff's Department parking lot to the bottom curve there, uh, entering the lower parking lot of the Sheriff's area. And you're correct, on, on the top, on the north end, there there is an island that needs to be removed. There is electrical, there is data in there, as well as further down somewhere about in the middle of the uh, site, uh, there was the NICOR and ComEd hookups that were pulled through there. So that is correct, Mr. Frost. It, so it, it took a lot of abuse from construction and it wasn't in great shape to start with. And, uh, you know, when we looked at the options of patching versus just repairing it once and for all, that's what was recommended. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Frost, our official representative in construction from the board. Good clarification. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Allen or Mr. Fraz? Seeing none, hearing none. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Fraz? Fraz, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Okay, resolution authorizing carpet replacement project for Keene Branch <coughs> Court Circuit Clerk Facility. Can I have a motion and a second? Gums will move. Gums moves. Berman second. Berman second. Mr. Allen? Yes, sir. So um, this is a significant project for the circuit clerk. Uh, and again, I, um, she couldn't make it today. I do have a very lengthy slide presentation that she was going to speak to, but if it pleases the board, we can forego that. Um, but basically, the carpet in the area is, uh, was deemed to be 
not able to be cleaned without destroying it. It's in such bad condition that a full uh, replacement was recommended and that's where we're moving here now. So if nobody needs to, if no one needs to see the uh, pictures of bad carpet, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I would say the slides don't do it justice as it was mentioned earlier about this sheriff's uh, control facility. If you get out there and walk the site, it's um, very noticeable, it's very bad. Yes. Okay. And this was a request from the circuit clerk. Request from the circuit clerk herself. Yes. Okay, well, um, any questions for Mr. Allen? Hearing none, seeing none. Roll call, please. Berman? Berman, yes. Davist? Davist? Davist, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Braz? Braz, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. <clears throat> All right, item D, resolution. Authorization of Kane County Judicial Center Boiler Plant Rehab Project. I hear a motion and a second. Gums will move. Gums move, Ford second. I did hear you right, Mr. Ford. Good. Berman second. Berman. <clears throat> Well, as we know, we've had significant, significant issues with the boilers out at the Judicial Center. Uh, many of you may remember last winter, we did emergency purchase affidavit to uh, get two boilers on site just in case the others uh, failed. Uh, obviously, we can't have a courtroom without uh, heat. So this uh, resolution here is for a full replacement, and this full replacement will, will include the two boilers we've already purchased. No cool pictures of bad boilers? Mm, so it's uh, no. Any questions for Mr. Allen? Hearing none, seeing none. Roll call, please. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Fries? Fries, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Um, item E, resolution authorizing authorization for building a COVID access control project. Mr. Martin moves. Herman second. Herman second. Uh, Mr. Peters, can you pull those slides up for me, please? So what I'm showing you here, and we've had many uh, times of discussion on this particular project. Um, what I'm showing you here is a rendering of what the front of the building will look like. Obviously you can easily pick out the current stairs um, and what this will add is a vestibule uh, as well as all floors will receive uh, other access control uh, items. Um, obviously this was started, uh, this project was started during the height of COVID to better control access into the facility as well as to, to control uh, access and to find ways to better serve the public during the pandemic. Next slide, please. Here I'm showing you our current timelines. Obviously we sit here today to admin committee approval uh, on uh, today the 9th. Uh, the rest of the scope is follows. And obviously we have put this out to bid. We have um, and are bringing it forward for uh, conversation and review. Okay, uh, Mr. Martin, comments, questions? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, this, this proposal uh, is a significant dollar expenditure and modification to this building uh, without real capacity to address, I think, other issues here. And it's also in the context of us now having authorized a uh, complete master plan uh, for the county, and and I my thought is that this conversation would be best deferred until we have it, have that master plan at least in place. So I would move to table this, uh, uh, and and defer discussion. There's a motion to table. Is there a second? Ross seconds. Ross second. No discussion. Roll call, please. Berman? 
to table? Carmen, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Fries? Fries, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Motion is, resolution is tabled. Until we hear from a, something in the master plan. It, I believe uh, the white, uh, Jason Dwyer of white brief that the uh, master plan could take up to three months at this point. So not in the quick near future, but in the future. Okay. We're expecting two or three months, something like that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I don't think we have anything from IT this morning. Nothing. And item seven, Mill Creek SSA, discussion native landscape maintenance RFP update. Mr. Yeah. Allen. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, introduce to the committee, Mr. Bill Meyer. Uh, he is the new coordinator of the Mill Creek SSA. He sits over there. Uh, he hit the ground running and is just outperforming up to our expectations at this time. So thank you, Mr. Meyer. I had my notes in a couple of places to have that introduction. And I said, I know that guy from somewhere. Welcome, Mr. Meyer. Thank you. Okay, now. Okay, now we'll carry on with the discussion of the native landscape. Yeah, native landscape maintenance RFP. We uh, did an RFP review on the 4th. Um, we started a scope review with a potential awardee yesterday, and they replied this morning. So Hopefully, forward, uh, moving forward to the next admin committee, we'll be moving forward with a uh, resolution to start the project. Approved and paid for by the SSA. SSA, yes, sir. Okay. Item B, resolution authorizing a contract for Mill Creek SSA AD sidewalk improvement project. Can I have a motion? Roz moves. Roz move. Council second. Come second. Mr. Allen. Yes, uh, we had originally put this out to bid and it, the uh, even the lowest bidder came in over our uh, budgeted amount. So we did a, a scope review and reduction in order to fit that in. Uh, and we're gonna be doing this significant amount of work with this on in the South Mill Creek area. Any questions for Mr. Allen? Hearing none, seeing none. Roll call, please. Berman. Berman, yes. Davist. Davis, yes. Ford? Fries? Fries, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Item eight, vehicles. I don't believe we have any discussion of vehicles. Necessary. Nine, construction. Discussion on the JJC build-out project. Mr. Yeah. Allen. Yes, sir. We uh, had that earlier in the resolution, and uh, I believe we discussed oh, it. That's right. Moved, second, and passed. Okay, and we handled our new business. Is there any other new business besides the sheriff's entries this morning? Nothing? Old business. Mr. Allen? No, sir. Uh, can I have a motion and a second to place the reports on file? Herman moves. Herman move. Council second. Dumb second. Roll call, please. Berman? Berman, yes. Davist? Davist, yes. Ford? Fries? Fries? Fries, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. I don't believe we have need for an executive session this morning. And that leaves uh, adjournment. A motion to second. Council moves. Fries moves. Gums move. Fries second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. See you next month.